Shabbat Shalom. Welcome everyone to our morning service, Kehilat Ariel Messianic Synagogue, San Diego, California. I'm Rabbi Barney Kasten, and uh, sorry we can't be together in person this age of coronavirus, uh, but uh, a blessing that we can at least connect uh, long distance through uh, the wonders of the internet and uh, and special welcome. I'm sure we have some new folks joining us uh, anywhere from San Diego, California to uh, Europe. We know some folks are tuned in. Uh, Latin America, some folks tuned in all the way to Israel. So Shabbat Shalom worldwide from us here in San Diego. And uh, although we can't be together, we are uh, excited about a beautiful service we can have. Shabbat Hagadol this day, the Sabbath, the great Sabbath before our redemption, the traditional Shabbat before Passover. So uh, great music and liturgy, prayers, and uh, Torah ahead of us. So uh, we're going to start with the uh, opening psalm for Shabbat morning. Uh, we do Psalm 95, and uh, thank God, who is the rock of our Yeshua, our salvation. So, if you're following in our uh, usual Siddur, the Messianic Siddur, it's uh, page 12 in Hebrew. Lechu niranina. Lechu niranina, niranina la donai naria, naria letsu yeshenu. Lechu niranina, niranina la donai naria. Naria, let's do you shame. Is me wrote, is me wrote, Naria lo, is me wrote, is me wrote, Naria lo. Nikad ma panav, Nikad ma panav, Nikad ma panav betoda. Is me wrote, is me wrote, Naria lo, is me wrote, is me wrote, Naria lo. Psalm ninety five. Come, let us sing to the Lord. Let us acclaim the rock of our salvation. Let us come before his face with thanksgiving. Let us acclaim him with songs. For God is a great Lord. He is a great king over all gods, in whose hand are the foundations of the earth. The highest heights are his as well. Amen. Let's have a personal prayer as we open up our Shachrit service. Avinu, Father in heaven, we thank you that we can come together on this Shabbat, Shabbat Hagadol. Thank you for physical redemption in our history. Thank you, we thank you as a Messianic synagogue for spiritual redemption through the Mashiach, Yeshua. And Father, we lift our praises to you today. May you be honored. And I pray a blessing, a spiritual touch on everyone who's joining us today, uh, long distance. Your spirit touches all of us. In Yeshua's name, amen, amen. All right, well, uh, the Shabbat before Pesach, we're gonna get some of those Passover songs going. So feel free to clap along at home, sing, join us. You'll see the words, Dayenu. God has done so many things for us. It would have been sufficient. But he just kept adding and adding and adding his blessings. So let's sing it out to him.
Lord is sufficient. Amen. Then all these miracles at this season, you know, this time of coronavirus and isolation, uh, good time for Pesach to come. Good time for this Shabbat Hagadol. So uh, may we understand a fresh vision of uh, who God is, what he has done. Avadim Hainu. We were slaves, now we're free. And uh, feel free, traditional Haggadah song, sing along with us. Good news. Slaves in the past 400 plus years in Egypt in our old history, but uh, God set us free at this season. 
something we've never forgotten in Israel, in the Jewish community, and uh, celebrate. The last 3,500 years, Pesach being the oldest holiday, religious holiday of mankind, and for good reason, holiday of redemption, slavery to freedom. And uh, for us in the Messianic Synagogue, slavery from our past, slavery from uh, our foolishness, maybe some choices we made, freedom of aligning our lives with God. So uh, Baruch Hashem, we bless his name today. So welcome again, everyone worldwide. Welcome to Kehilat Ariel, Congregation of the Lion of God, uh, Messianic Synagogue. Well, everyone hopefully has heard about Messianic Judaism. Uh, most of us from various Jewish backgrounds, uh, anywhere from Orthodox to secular, but uh, adding to our Jewish heritage and our, our Judaism, it's not taking away really uh, anything I can figure out, but adding the fulfillment of the Mashiach that has come. So that is who we are here in San Diego, California, uh, Messianic Synagogue, Kehilat Ariel. I'm Rabbi Barney Kasten, so welcome everyone worldwide and so glad you can join us. We wish we could reach out as we usually do and hug everyone and greet everyone personally, but please accept our long distance hug and uh, know that we're thinking about everyone. Miss you guys in a personal way. That so glad we can connect and uh, the connection of the Ruach is the strongest one. Amen. So uh, a few prayers as we uh, are taping this morning service. Uh, page 52 in the Siddur. Baruch She'amar, traditional prayer of the morning service and a psalm that goes with it. Page 52 and 53 if you're following in our Messianic uh, Siddur, Rudolf Siddur. Baruch Shemar Bahayah Olaham Baruch Hu. Blessed is he who spoke the world into being. Blessed is he. Blessed is he who was in the beginning. Blessed is he who spoke and it was. Blessed is he who decrees and is faithful. Blessed is he who shows mercy to the world. Oh, yes, Lord. Blessed is he who shows mercy to all his creatures. Blessed is he who rewards those who fear him with good. Blessed is he who lives and has existed forever and to all eternity. Blessed is he who redeems and saves. Bless his name. Blessed are you, Lord our God, King of the universe, God, Father of mercy, who is praised by the mouth of your people, extolled and glorified by the tongue of your righteous servants. Lord our God, we give you praise through the songs of David, your servant. Through his hymns and psalms, we will exalt and honor and glorify you. We will declare your name, declaring you, you king, our king, our God. You alone, O king, are the life of the universe. The greatness of your name will be praised and glorified forever and ever. Blessed are you, Lord, King, who is praised in song. And let us say, Amen. So many beautiful morning blessings to thank God. And even at a time of challenge and trials like we are currently all in, uh, Baruch Hashem, blessed be he who watches over each and every one of us today as we call on his name. I'll turn it over to our Gabbai, Eric Kragenbrink, uh, who will lead us in some of the continuing prayers. Shabbat Shalom. Shabbat Shalom. We'll meet on page 74 for the Baruch Hu. It's interesting to note that when it comes to giving a gift to the Lord, anything that we try to make, present before him, is from that which he gives. Creation itself lends it to its own function that he gave it, yet to mankind alone do we have a will 
And by that in the bark pool, we lend our will to the Lord. We're not stiff. It is a gift to him. We return to him the blessing that he gave us, the gift of life and gift of faith. Marku et Adonai ha-mevoras Marku et Adonai ha-mevoras Le'olam v'ahed Bless the Lord who is blessed. Blessed and praised, glorified, glorified, exalted, and honored be the name of the Supreme King of Kings, the Holy One. Blessed be He. He is the first and the last, and there is no God besides Him. Extol Him who abides in the heavens, and rejoice before His countenance of Him who is named Lord. His name is exalted far beyond all blessings and psalms. His glorious name and kingdom will be blessed forever and ever. Let the Lord's name be blessed both now and all time. And then please join with me for the Shema, which we rise for. That's on page 80. Shema Yisrael Adonai Eloheinu Adonai Echad Baruch Shem Tevu Malchuto Le'olam Vayed Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God, the Lord is one. Blessed is his glorious name, whose kingdom is forever and ever. The Vahafta is found below that, lower portion of page 80. Vahafta et Adonai Elohecha, b'kol lavavacha, uvachol nafshcha, uvachol meodecha. Vahayu haravarim ha'ele, asheh anochi. Mitzavcha, hi home, all live a vecha. Prishinan tam live a necha. Vidi barta, bamba shivacha. Live a techa, uvletacha, vetterech. Ukshachacha, uvomecha. Ukshar tam liot oyedecha. Veha yut a tota foot, bain a necha. Ukhtaptam. Al mizazot betecha, hu vihisharecha. You will find the translation of that in the lower portion of page 81. Right now, I'd like to go ahead and a complimentary verse, which we find at the bottom of the page of 81. For those that have their sidurs with them, please join with me. From 1 Corinthians 8, chapter, verses 4 to 6. For we know that an idol is nothing in the world, and that there are no other God but one. For even if there are so-called gods, whether in heaven or on earth, as there are many gods and many lords, yet for us there is only one God, the Father, from whom all things, and we for him and one Lord, Yeshua the Messiah, through whom are all things and through whom we live. Rabbi? Amen. Uh, God is one. No debate on that one. Yeshua himself uh, was asked by a fellow rabbi in Israel, uh, the greatest commandment, and, and he answered, responded, Shema Yisrael, Adonai Eloheinu Adonai Echad. So God is one, and uh, the mystery of that revelation, even as it continues through the Mashiach. So uh, a blessing. Uh, deep truth to meditate on. And at Passover, uh, you may know that, uh, of course, the kids get to ask some questions. And uh, why is this night, why is this ceremony so unusual? Why is it different from all other nights? So uh, it's a nice uh, song, kind of a little 
jazzy version here. Manish uh, Tana. So feel free to sing at home and get into the spirit of the Seder. Well, I guess you got to come back uh, Thursday evening, find the answer at our community Seder. Uh, virtual Seder, by the way, will be available on our website, kehilatrel.org, so you'll be watching for that. Why is this night different? Why do we eat matzah instead of regular bread for these eight days? Uh, why the bitter herbs? Uh, all the answers to these mysteries in the Haggadah that we will talk about. So. Uh, a little warm-up for Passover here. On this Shabbat morning, Shabbat Hagadol, designated special Shabbat before our redemption, before we left Egypt, the great Sabbath, and uh, good things to meditate on this morning. So again, welcome everyone.
Kehilat Ariel, if you're just tuning in. Messianic Synagogue in San Diego, California, and coming uh, through the internet, a miracle of the internet, and uh, doing our best to stay connected uh, in these times of isolation and separation, that uh, we're all connected by the Ruach of God. At this time, we'll uh, unify in a prayer, uh, the central prayer, the Amidah. The Amidah, standing prayer, so if you're able to stand uh, at home, uh, wherever you may be. Page 86 in our Siddur. Uh, by the way, if you're following along, of course, any Siddur, you can find these prayers. So the Shabbat Amidah, uh, Art Scroll Siddur, uh, if you're in Israel, whatever version you have, uh, uh, conservative, orthodox, doesn't matter, uh, messianic, we're all united in this prayer called the Amidah. Page 86 in our Siddur, and uh, as is customary, we face Jerusalem. So I don't know what that means to you at home, that figure out basically which way is Jerusalem. And as uh, Daniel, the prophet, three times a day, prayed out his window uh, towards Jerusalem, and even as he was in Babylon, uh, we now face Jerusalem. And prayers for our people worldwide, prayers for the state of Israel, uh, also under this pandemic, prayers for the USA, prayers for Italy, prayers for the entire Middle East. And uh, this time of silent reflection with the Amidah, uh, the Father's close, God is near, and feel free to bring your heartfelt request at this time of challenge. So we'll have a few moments of silent reflection, then we'll pray together. Avinu Sheba Shemaim, Father in heaven, we do connect to you, we connect to each other through this miracle you gave us of prayer. We pray right now for our holy state of Israel. Many challenges at this time. Touch our people with your shalom. Touch our people with a fresh revelation of your presence even the revelation of Mashiach. We pray for Italy. Oh, Lord, spare lives. We pray for Spain. Por favor, spare lives. And we pray for the USA. And wherever anyone may be who's tuned into our service today. Father, a hedge of protection. Gesund, health. And thank you that uh, Messiah has got us covered as we call upon him. Touch every one of us, every person tuned in to see, God, that you are reaching out to us and we reach back to you on this Shabbat through our righteous Mashiach, Yeshua. We all say, Amen. Amen. And back to page 86. We continue praying towards Jerusalem. Baruch atah Adonai, Eloheinu ve'elohe avoteinu, Elohe Abraham, Elohe Yitzchak, Elohe Yaakov, Ha'el hagado ha'gibor v'hanora, El elyon, Gomel chasadim tovim, V'kone ha'kol, 
Uvevi goel litnei v'nehem l'ma'an shemo be'ahava. Melech ozer u'mos u'magen. Baruch atah Magen Abraham. Atah gipor le'olam Adonai mechayet. Ata Rav Lehoshia, Mashiv HaRuach, Umarid HaGeshem, Mechakel Chaim BeChesem, Mechaye Meitim BeRachamim Rabim, So Mech Nochlim BeRofe Olim, Umatir Asorim, Umekayem Emunato, Lishene <laughs> Amen. And let's go to the Modima Nachnu, page 91 in the English, and uh, make this your heartfelt prayer. Lord, we are eternally grateful that you are the Lord our God and the God of our fathers. You are the strength of our life and the shield of our salvation. We thank you from generation to generation and recount your praise for our lives which are in your hand, for our souls which are in your care, and for your miracles which are seen every day, and for your wondrous deeds and favors which are always with us, evening, morning, and noon. Beneficent One, your compassion never fails. Merciful One, your loving kindness never ends. You have always been our hope. For all these things we will bless and we will lift up your name our King, always, to the end of the age and until. And all the living will thank you, and in truth they will praise your name, the God of our salvation and our help at all times. Blessed are you, Lord, for it is right to give thanks to you, for your name is good. And let us all say, Amen. Isn't that beautiful? God's been the hope of every generation. In, in Jews, uh, Jewish nation, we've known this for about 4,000 years since Abraham. And uh, he will get us through this with God's strength. But may we be renewed in our faith and a new connection, a uh, personal relationship with the God of our fathers at this time. Amen. Well, we continue with uh, a couple songs of worship. And uh, again... Uh, Passover related, this one, a messianic song, but directly from the Torah, Leviticus 23, uh, excuse me, Leviticus 17. The blood of the sacrifice, the covering of the Messiah over us. So uh, let's sing it out to him in Hebrew.
says it. Check it out in Leviticus 17.11. The atonement that is predicted through the Mashiach seen in those sacrifices. And uh, we turn to another song of the Haggadah, Adir Hu. How precious is God? How blessed is He? How great is He? And may He return soon to establish His kingdom on earth. Oh, Lord, at this time of uh, worldwide pandemic, how we could use that kingdom. So really a prayer at Passover, but a prayer good for everyone. Let's join our voices together and praise Hashem.
One who delivered us in that generation so long ago is available today. That's what we found out. Living God of Israel, thank you for sending the Mashiach to us. As you did miracles for our people, we pray blessings, hedge of protection, miracles today. Bless everyone who's tuned in to this Messianic Shabbat service. May we have a fresh understanding of who you are, God of our fathers, and the anointed one you sent, Yeshua. We lift our praise today, Adir Hu, through Yeshua, and let us all say, Amen. Amen. Baruch Hashem. All right. We praise you, Lord. Thank you. I think uh, Passover comes at a good time this year. Time in need of a fresh encouragement. A time uh, from anxiety that will go into praise, actually. So uh, may God touch every one of us uh, at this Shabbat service today. Kehilat Ariel, Messianic Synagogue, San Diego, California. Again, I'm Rabbi Barney Kasdan, so uh, glad you're joining us. And may the Ruach, the Spirit, uh, give us all a special touch today. Amen. All right, well, we're going to segue into our Torah service. And um, a little different, of course, a lot of things are different these days, aren't they? Uh, we wish we could all be together. We're coming to you uh, through the miracle of the Internet, that just a handful of people. Uh, here to record the service, but hundreds of you uh, listening in uh, across the country and even worldwide. And special greeting to all our members of Kehilat Ariel in the San Diego, California area, but uh, to all of you, wherever you may be tuned in, all the way from San Diego to Eretz Yisrael. Uh, Baruchim Habaim. Welcome, everyone. And uh, so something a little different, you know, we can't really bring the Torah scroll out, you know, social distancing, touching, handling. So uh, the Torah, we will open the ark at the right time, but, uh, and we will have the traditional readings of the Parsha, but we will use our uh, standard Tanakh, and we've got our, our uh, readers uh, available up here. So I'm going to call up uh, Avishai, please. And uh, the rest of the readers are available. Uh, Elisheva, Balakasha, and uh, some of the group up here will be assisting as well. So the Torah service is page 92 in our Messianic Siddur, Budoff Siddur. Very helpful tool, by the way. You can check that out on Amazon.com, Budoff Siddur. And uh, page 92. And uh, yet you can follow us along, obviously, in any siddur. All these are traditional prayers. So uh, may the Lord touch us with a fresh encouragement, revelation of his word. Part way down on page 92, Ein Chamocha. Hein kmocha velohi madonai va en kamasecha malchut ocha malchut kolamim emem shaltcha bchodor vador Adonai melech Adonai malach Adonai Adonai hos le amo yitain, Adonai varech et amo 
shalom. Al-Rachamim, heiti v'vatsamcha et siyom. Tivne chomot Yerushalayim, Tivne chomot Yerushalayim. Ki v'chalavad batachnu, Melech el Ram v'nisa, Adon olamim. And together, Lord, there is no God like you, no deeds like yours, your kingdom is a kingdom for all eternity, and your dominion is from generation to generation. The Lord is king. The Lord was king. The Lord will be king forever and ever. The Lord will give strength to his people. Lord, give your blessing of peace to your people. Compassionate Father, may it please you to favor Sion with your goodness. Rebuild the walls of Jerusalem, for we trust only in you, King God. High and exalted, Lord of eternity. Towards the bottom of page 92. Vaya even so haron, vaya omer moshe, kuma adonai, vaya futsu oevecha, vaya nusu misenecha. Mi panecha ki mitzion te tse Torah ki mitzion te tse Torah Udavar Adonai me Yerushalayim Moruch shenantam Torah Torah. Maruch shenantam, Torah, Torah, le'amo Yisrael be'hekdushato. And it came to pass, whenever the ark went forth, Moses would say, Rise up, Lord, and scatter your enemies, and may those who hate you run from your countenance. Instruction will go forth out of Zion and the Lord's word from Jerusalem. Blessed is he who, in holiness, gave the Torah to his people Israel. Page 94. Shema Yisrael Adonai Eloheinu Adonai Echad. Echad Eloheinu Gadol Adonainu Kadosh Mo God Lu Adonai Ramamash Mo Yachda Hero Israel, the Lord our God, the Lord is one. One is our God, great is our Lord. Holy is his name. Exalt the Lord with me, and let us exalt his name together. Shamayim uva 
thine, O Lord, is the glory and the greatness and the power. And let us say, Amen. All right. Well, uh, Shabbat Hagadol. So we'll put the readings up on the screen, please. And uh, Tzav is the portion that uh, with this Shabbat before Passover, it's called Shabbat Hagadol. And uh, Torah reading, traditional Leviticus 7, uh, we'll read in English. We're starting in chapter 6, verse 1 of the Hebrew. Please note, if you're following in, in English, there's some variation here. Uh, the Parsha starts with Leviticus 6, 8. But we're starting in Hebrew, uh, in the Tanakh, Leviticus 6, verse 1. And we'll read some of the English in the Parsha. Uh, the special Haftarah reading, uh, Malki, Malachi. Uh, read, uh, anticipating Passover, and uh, for us Messianic Jews, 1 Corinthians 5, New Testament, written by a rabbi, Shaul, Paul, and talking about Pesach. So uh, the blessings in your Siddur, and we will have Avishai chant the Torah. Blessings in the Siddur on page 96, if you're following our Siddur. And uh, the blessings before the Torah, then Avishai will chant the Hebrew, then English reading. Baruchu et Adonai HaMevorach Baruch Adonai HaMevorach Le'olam Va'ed Baruch Adonai HaMevorach Le'olam Va'ed Baruch atah Adonai, Eloheinu melech ha'olam, asher bahar banu mikol ha'amin, v'natam lanu et torato, Baruch atah Adonai, Eloheinu atorah, amen. Baikra, Leviticus chapter 6, verse 1, a few verses. Amen. Ve ye deber Adonai el Moshe le mor Tzav et Aharon et Panav le mor Zot Torat haolah ki haolah Mokda al Mizbeach bo halayla ad haboker Ve'esh ha-mizbeach tukat bo Ve'lavash ha-kohen Ido va'ad U'nechnaser va'ad Yilbash al-betaro Ve'hevim et ha-deshem Asher tochal ha-esh Et haolah ha-hamiz be'ach v'asamo etzel ha-miz be'ach u'fashat et begadav v'lavash begadim acherim v'hutzi et ha-deshem el mi-chutz l'machaneh Amen. Amen. Thank you. And uh, we fast forward in the Parsha, in the English, Leviticus 7, verse 11 through 15. And, uh, of course, this section talking about the various sacrifices of the priesthood. Now, this is the Torah of the sacrifice of fellowship offerings, which may be offered to Adonai. If he brings it for a thanksgiving, then he is to present with the sacrifice of thanksgiving matzah cakes mixed with oil, matzah wafers anointed with oil, and fine flour cakes mixed with oil. He is to present his offering with the sacrifice of his fellowship offerings for thanksgiving along with cakes of bread with hummets. 
From each, he is to offer one out of every offering as a gift to Adonai. It will belong to the Kohen who sprinkles the blood with the fellowship offerings. The meat of the sacrifice of his fellowship offerings for thanksgiving is to be eaten on the day of his offering. He is not to leave any of it until the morning. Amen. Amen. And a word about uh, this portion. You can read uh, the several chapters of the Parsha. Uh, but of course, Leviticus, uh, Levitical laws, priestly laws, this section, the first few chapters, dealing with sacrifices. And uh, this uh, paragraph that we read, the Shlamim, the Shalom offering, uh, fellowship offering, a community offering, however it may be translated, but the word is uh, Shalem, total completeness, of course, from Shalom, the Shalom offering, peace offering. And uh, I think maybe it's uh, prophetic, a God thing, that uh, worldwide, in Judaism, we're reading the portion uh, today uh, talking about how to have peace, how to have peace with God, how to have peace in this world. And, uh, of course, the sacrifices were just symbolic. We understand that. But important symbolism that, that uh, with those offerings, it was the faith of the person that made that offering applicable. So uh, may we all... Uh, understand more the peace of God, where that can come from. This Shlemim offering, peace offering, and uh, may we, like our forefathers, have faith in that picturesque symbolism and have peace with God and peace at this time of trial. In Yeshua's name, amen. Closing blessing of the Torah, please. Ta Adonai, Eloheinu Melech HaOlam, Asher Natan Lanu Torah Emet, Beha Olam Nata Bichokeinu, Baruch Ata Adonai, Noten HaTorah. Amen. Thank you. Yasha Koach. All right, uh, Elisheva. Liz Kasten will come and chant the blessing of the uh, Haftorah and the Siddur and blessing over the prophets as we uh, turn to Malachi chapter 3, the very last portion of the prophetic books. Baruch atah Adonai Eloheinu melech haolam asher bachar Nevim Tovim Vratzava Dibrahim and the Emarim Bahemet Baruchata Adonai Avocher Batora of Moshe Abdahu of Israel Amo Nenvieha Emet Batsedek. And let us say, Amen. Thank you, Lord. Words of the prophet. 100% true, proven in Israel. And so uh, a few verses, uh, Malki, and again, it's in the Tanakh, the versification's a little different. Uh, in Christian Bibles, there's chapter 4, but in the, in the original Tanakh, it's, it's uh, chapter 3, uh, verse 23. Amen. Zichru. Torah at Moshe Avdi Asher Mitziviti Oto Behorev Alko Israel Kuki Mumish Pati Hinehe Anohi Chole Achlachem Et Eliahu Hanavi Lifne O Yom Adonai Agado Vahanorah Beheshi Hivlev Ovo Avot Aubanihim 
ולהבנים על אבותם הן אבו להיקטע את הארץ הרם. And interesting note here, we don't end with the final verse of Malachi because, of course, it talks about a harem, uh, a curse <laughs> upon the land. Uh, we don't like stopping there. So you may notice in your Hebrew Tanakh, it says, go back and repeat verse 23, which is much more positive. So uh, we will do that in English. Read the portion, as you can see, uh, Malachi 3, verse 20 through 24, but then repeating verse 23, please. But for you who revere my name, the Son of Righteousness will rise with healing in its wings. Then you will go forth and skip about like calves from the stall. You will trample on the wicked, for they will be ashes. Under the soles of your feet in the day that I am making, says Adonai Tzvaot, Remember the Torah of Moses, my servant, whom I commanded at Horeb, statutes and ordinances for all Israel. Behold, I am coming to send you Elijah the prophet. Behold, the coming of the great and terrible day of Adonai. He will turn the hearts of fathers to their children and the hearts of children to their fathers. Else will I come and strike the land with utter destruction. Behold, I am going to send you Elijah the prophet before the coming of the great and terrible day of Adonai. Amen. I will say, Amen. Of course, Shabbat Hagadol, that's uh, understandable how this passage is read worldwide uh, in our tradition. Uh, we're getting ready for our redemption. Of course, there's a cup of Elijah at our Seder, hoping because he's the one to announce the Messianic redemption. He's the one to announce the coming of Mashiach. And for us Messianics, the return of Mashiach. So uh, we anticipate uh, that promise and thankful to God. Hopefully even in this time of discouragement and some fear, uh, we realize God's on plan A. He's going to fulfill his word as he's proven so often in Israel. Amen. Amen. Closing blessing of the Haftarah, please. Baruch Adonai. Eloheinu melech haolam, sur kol alamin, sadik v'kol adorot, ha'el ha'neeman ha'omer v'yaoseh, ha'medaber u'mekayem, shehol levarav emet v'tzedek, ne'eman atahu, Adonai Eloheinu, v'ne'emanim d'varecha, d'varecha d'midvarecha, achor lo yashuv rekam, ki ha'melech ne'eman, Rahman Atta, Baruch Atta Adonai, Ha'el HaLeman Bechol Devarav. Rachem Al Tzion, Ki Hivet Chayenu, Ela Aluvat Nefesh Toshia, Bimhera V'yameinu, Baruch Atta Adonai, Nesamech Tzion Bevalecha. Samcheinu Adonai Eloheinu, Yeliyahu Hanavi Avdecha, Ufmachut be David, Meshichecha, Bimhera Yavo, Vigilkeli, Benu, Alkiso, Lo Yeshev Zar, Lo Yin Hau, O Rachirim, Et Kvodo, Kivishim Hachachanish Patalo, Shalo Yifbenero, Leolam Bahed, Baruchata Harunai, Magain David. Al HaTorah, V'yal HaAvodah, V'yal HaNuvim, V'yal Yom HaShabbat HaZeh, Shnatata Lanu Adonai Eloheinu, L'Kdusha U'Limnucha, L'Kavod U'Litifaret, Al HaKol Adonai Eloheinu, Halachnu Modim Lach, U'Mevorachim Otcha, Yifarech Shimcha V'fi Kol Hai, Tamid le'olam v'ahed, Baruch atah Adonai, L'Kadesh ha'shavat. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Yashar Koach. Thank you, God, for the words of the prophets.
And in our Messianic synagogue, we have a uh, reading also over the Jewish New Testament. And uh, Noach, Yamod, uh, Noach and Abraham will come and read the blessing first over in the Siddur. Um, Rabbi will help you out, find that blessing. Page 100. And uh, special blessing that, uh, again, is not part of uh, uh, other traditional Siddurs, but we, it's not, in Messianic Judaism, it's not what we, taking away anything, but adding. So we do add a blessing for the new covenant, as we understand. And we read from the letter of Rabbi Shaul, 1 Corinthians chapter 5, dealing with Pesach. Very interesting. Your boasting is no good. Don't you know that just a little chametz leavens the whole batch of dough? Get rid of the old chametz, so you may be a new batch, just as you are unleavened. The Mashiach, our Passover lamb, has been sacrificed. Therefore, let us celebrate the feast not with old chametz, but the chametz, uh, with the chametz of malice and wickedness, but with the unleavened bread, the matzah of sincerity and truth. Let us say. Amen. In other words, get your matzah down at Ralph's Market, all right? We're ready for Pesach. And yet the very important symbolism, unleavened, no sin. Leaven, yeast, is a corruption. It's actually a bacteria. Uh, and our sages tell us that it's a symbol of sin and bad choices and breaking the Torah. So isn't it interesting, God has given us this holiday the last 3,500 years to remove the chametz, to remove those things that permeate our lives, that take us away from God, and uh, yet to bring in the matzah, the pure bread. And uh, again, I think we're all seeing uh, it's doubly important this year of coronavirus, pandemic, and uh, uh, really a wake-up call for the whole world. Uh, to examine our lives, remove the chametz, to come back to a pure faith in God. May it be so. Amen. Closing blessing of the new covenant, please. Baruch atah Adonai Eloheinu melech haolam, asher natan lanu, devar emet vechaye olam, natan betochenu. Baruch atah Adonai, notem rechadasha. Amen. Thank you, Lord, for the words of the renewed covenant, Brich Hadashah. All right, and we have uh, a Misha Berach blessing over all those who come up to honor God in the Torah, all eight people at service here today. Uh, <laughs> so, uh, hey, social distancing, remember? Oh, I know, usually the rabbis laying hands on you, but uh, you'll get it long distance, okay? Misha Berach, Avoteno, Abraham, Yitzach, Yaakov, Hu Yivarech, Kol HaKibutza Hazor. Lord God, God of our fathers, may you bless this group who has come up to honor God and the Torah. Health, hedge of protection, spiritual blessing as we enter this Pesach season. Thank you for all our blessings through the righteous Messiah, Yeshua. And let us say, Amen. 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 Blessings to you all. All right, Bezod HaTorah, please. We will do the prayers. We know the Torah is resting in social distancing. Uh, you can join us at home. What page? Page 98. Bezod Leave Nebane Israel, I'll be Adonai, the Ad Moshe. And this is the Torah that Moses placed before the children of Israel. It is given by the hand of Moses, it is from the mouth of God. About three quarters down the page, 98. It's Kaim he long makhazikimba, ve tamecheha, 
It is a tree of life to those who take hold of it, and happy are those who support it. Its ways are ways of pleasantness, and all its paths are peace. Long life is in its right hand, and in its left hand are riches and honor. The Lord is pleased for the sake of his righteousness to make the Torah great and glorious. can be seated. And uh, a few announcements here uh, this morning. Kehilat Ariel. Again, if you just tuned in, welcome to Kehilat Ariel Messianic Synagogue, San Diego, California. I'm Rabbi Barney Kasson, and uh, our quorum of uh, worship members here to help run the service. But uh, of course, we're in this uh, social isolation, which is, is quite uh, a test, I'm sure, for all of us. But glad you can join us. Uh, membership, Kehilat Ariel members, so glad you could tune in. Welcome. We're thinking about you. Wish we could all be together as usual. Uh, the day will come. The day will come soon, we pray. And uh, I'm sure we have some new folks tuning in locally from California here. But uh, I know we've been contacted all the way from Europe and Israel. So uh, welcome, wherever you may be from. Glad you can join us for this Messianic service. Messianic, Jewish, what's that about, if you're uh, wondering? Uh, we're from mostly uh, Jews, uh, many of us from Jewish backgrounds, various persuasions, uh, Orthodox uh, background, all the way to secular. Uh, we have intermarried families. We've got uh, uh, non-Jews who don't have a technical Jewish connection uh, physically, but interesting, in the New Testament it says everyone who has faith in the Jewish Messiah is grafted in to this Jewish understanding. So uh, we're thankful uh, that uh, we can all come together. And, um, and again, Messianic Judaism, in, in a nutshell, it's not taken away from our Jewish background. Uh, that used to confuse me and kept me away from Yeshua and Jesus for a long time, till my college years. But, uh, Messianic Judaism is the realization that the Mashiach has come and fulfilled. Yeshua himself said, Matthew chapter 5, verse 17, don't think I've come to abolish the Torah, but I've come to fulfill. And that's how we like to look at it. Keep it simple, but we love our Jewish tradition and uh, pretty traditional service we have, we enjoy, and uh, yet with the extra uh, piece of the puzzle called Yeshua as our Messiah. So welcome everyone who's tuned in. And a couple of announcements before we get into a scripture study. Um, again, you're doing the best thing right now. Keep tuned to our website, kehilatariel.org. Everything goes through our website. And there's various links for special events. Uh, actually, we've got a full calendar going right now, especially with the holidays. So uh, Check out our, our uh, website, kehilatariel.org. Uh, there's free Hebrew classes offered on Tuesday nights. I'd love for you to tune in to that. Check that out. There's a, a Taste of the Torah class on uh, Saturday morning preceding this service. So if you missed it uh, this week, uh, check it out for next week uh, where it's a teaching through the Parsha and the implications of it uh, available online. Uh, there's also a link for various Havarot groups. We have something like 15 small groups scattered around San Diego County, and uh, yet you can tap into any one of those, many of those, uh, via the internet these days. So check out the link for that. Uh, an important announcement, we are uh, uh, wanting to help people. That's what a synagogue's about. 
Uh, that's what, uh, what Jewish tradition is about, tikkun olam, helping to restore the world. And in a day when many people are hurting, and even some who are listening here, you may be hurting, uh, we're here. We're, we're, we're happy to help. And uh, that can be uh, counsel, that can be spiritual guidance, that can be uh, practical. We have our own food pantry here in San Diego. Uh, if that can be helpful, please contact our office. Our office is obviously closed at this time, but we are picking up messages and emails. So contact us, kehilatariel.org, and you'll find how to connect to us. Uh, so if someone needs uh, some assistance in that way, uh, we have some resources. Uh, we also have some relationship with some other uh, agencies around San Diego. Jacob Food Bank, we have uh, supported for many years. Jewish Family Service, uh, we have supported many years. Food Pantry, Food Bank. So uh, you can go directly to those Jewish organizations and, and uh, find some good resources. Here in San Diego, all you need to know is the number is 211. 211, either by phone, 211, or 211 San Diego on the web. And there are dozens of social service organizations that are available. And again, we have supported and volunteered in many of these organizations, so it makes sense for us to tap in and, and uh, either help out at this time, volunteer at this time, or if you need assistance, there's a great resource at 211 San Diego. Uh, and just for the record, an announcement, we are actually having an uh, impromptu uh, food drive uh, here at the synagogue. So if you're in the San Diego area, and uh, you know, many of us actually have been blessed, and we're the ones that can give. We're the ones that can offer some uh, support to those in need. Well, uh, just for the record, uh, this Sunday, Monday, and Tuesday, right before Pesach, Sunday, Monday, Tuesday afternoons, 1 p.m. to 6 p.m. California time, anyone in San Diego or wherever you may be can drop off a bag of groceries. Uh, it would be helpful to have some Passover supplies. We, we've been contacted by some families that just need Passover supplies, and they are unemployed all of a sudden. So uh, this uh, announcement's for a lot of us that are listening in. Uh, we don't necessarily need the help, but we can give. So feel free, if you're in San Diego, drop any food donations off at our outside our office. Office not open, but outside our office. Uh, Sunday, Monday, Tuesday afternoons, 1 p.m. to 6 p.m. And we will put that in our growing food pantry and distribute it to those who contact us. So. Prayerfully consider that, and God bless you as you give. All right, well, what can we say? It's a challenging time of this coronavirus uh, pandemic worldwide. Time of testing. Time of worry for a lot of people. And believers, you know, we have our faith, but uh, that anxiety can't help but creep in a little bit maybe to our lives. Uh, those without faith, I mean, how can we get by without uh, faith? So the anxiety multiplies. I was reading a, an article about a news conference uh, that happened here in San Diego, and uh, the county uh, mental health uh, authorities actually made an interesting warning. Uh, you, we're used to hearing every day now, unfortunately, coronavirus, watch out, don't touch, wash your hands everything, which is good counsel. But this one was watch out for news anxiety. News anxiety. Turn off the TV. Don't worry so much about Facebook, the Internet. Uh, actually, the county mental health said, if you know, we have to keep in touch. We need to be educated and definitely stay away from conspiracy theories and mishigas that is floating around inevitably at this time of, of uh, trial. But uh, just pick maybe a time, a, a newscast that you trust, and listen in, half hour, whatever it takes, and get the news you need. But uh, watch out for news anxiety. 
And it's interesting, one of the county authorities, mental health authorities, said, quote, we don't know what's going to happen with this whole thing, so there's no point in worrying about it. <laughs> and really, we don't know, and worry uh, is not going to solve it. I, I'd like to supplement that with uh, uh, more of a spiritual quote that I've used instead of worrying, but uh, it's been said, we don't know what the future holds, but we know who holds the future. Who holds the future? So guess what? Hey, Israel, Jews, you know, anyone affiliated with Judaism, uh, we've been through a lot. 4,000 years, starting with our father Abraham, and God has shown himself faithful. Amen? I mean, believe it or not, even worse things than a pandemic have hit Israel. And yet, Am Yisrael Chai, here we are. And with those in faith, who could be against us if God is for us? And I'm working all things, the scripture says, so all things for good to those who love God and stay connected to his purpose. So, uh, yeah, we may not, we don't know what the future holds, but we know who holds the future. Amen. And we keep our faith strong and watch out for news anxiety among everything else. Well, today on this Shabbat Hagadol, the Sabbath before our redemption of Pesach, I, I want to speak about a, a topic that I was planning to address uh, as I thought about this a couple months ago. That in God's sovereignty, it becomes even more important, I think, this morning. I thought for a moment of changing the topic, you know, let's talk coronavirus, let's talk worry, let's talk, you know, I, I've had enough of that of you. <laughs> we get plenty of news. But how about choosing a lamb for Passover? In the Torah, not only talks about the lamb of Pesach, but uh, also details on choosing the lamb. How do you find a lamb? What is the qualified lamb for Pesach? Uh, this holiday that we approach. And so a good time at this uh, Shabbat Hagadol to consider uh, the bigger picture, the bigger spiritual picture, what God has in mind. Choosing a lamb for Passover. First we have the description of the lamb. And this is in Exodus chapter 12, Shmot, chapter 12, and the first paragraph, uh, verse 1 through 5. Interesting description. Now Adonai spoke to Moses and Aaron in the land of Egypt, saying, This month, Nisan, will, be, will mark the beginning of months for you. It is to be the first month of the year for you. Tell all the congregation of Israel that on the tenth day of this month, each man is to take a lamb for his family, one lamb for the household. But if the household is too small for a lamb, then he and his nearest neighbor are to take one according to the number of the people. According to each person eating, you are to make your count for the lamb. Your lamb is to be without blemish, a year old. You may take it from the sheep or from the goats. The lamb chosen by Passover. Uh, and the description of the lamb. Now, uh, Familiar verse, Exodus 12, for uh, any Torah student. But uh, we've entered into the beginning of months, the first month. And a lot of times we tend to think, even educated Jews, right, that Tishri, first month, right? Rosh Hashanah, New Year, Happy New Year, everyone, we say. But uh, we forget that older, older New Year, civil New Year, agricultural New Year is actually the month of Nisan that we have just entered. Springtime, new growth, new things. Kind of makes sense, doesn't it? That this would be the beginning of months. And that at this beginning of months, we're to take a lamb for each household. And uh, the lamb is called the Pesach. Uh, so, you know, we're so used to calling the holiday Pesach, we forget that the Pesach is actually the lamb. Get a Pesach for yourself. Uh, 
and we translate, oh, get a Passover lamb. Well, Pesach in Hebrew, you don't even have to translate it. It is, it is what it is. It is the sacrifice of this holiday that God is giving to Israel. And, of course, we have uh, Passover. We have the Seder. Uh, we've got all sorts of amazing story in the Haggadah, the tell the story. And I think this year it's going to be doubly uh, amazing as we think of the ten plagues. Remember the plagues, darkness, frogs, dever, pestilence. That's what it means. Pestilence. I mean, just write in your Haggadah, coronavirus, if you want. Not a new thing, pestilence over uh, the world population. Actually, pretty common. Happens uh, more often than we would like to think. And yet, interesting, one of the ten plagues over Egypt, you, we all know the story, right? Israel's in slavery, needs to be delivered. Pharaoh is not budging, hard head, uh, fighting God. And so God brings these ten plagues, you know, the, the ten drops we pour out during the, the Seder. And yet one of them this year, man, we got to think about that, dever, pestilence, plagues. And... Uh, it's coming over Egypt. A pestilent is coming over Egypt, the whole nation. And God gave fair warning to Egypt and to Israel. Dever, pestilence, is coming. Uh, so everyone get in their house. <laughs> We're not the only first ones to be socially isolated. Everyone get in their house. And there's going to be one way of escape from the pestilence. What is it? Well, uh, it's the Pesach. It's the lamb. The description of the lamb, take for your household. And, of course, he'll describe the ceremony uh, in the verses to come. Uh, but take the lamb for each house, unblemished lamb, notice, perfect lamb, as perfect as you can get. Totally kosher, no broken chip bones, no disease of any kind. So uh, get the best lamb you can get for your household. And the point here is that, did you notice in the Torah, it says choose the lamb on what day? Tenth of Nisan. Tenth of the month, right? We just read. So Pesach itself is going to be the evening of the 14th, going into the 15th. Uh, four days later. But interesting detail, and, and guess what? When God gives these kind of details, you have to think it's rather important, don't you? <laughs> so choose the lamb on the 10th of Nisan. Uh, guess what, gang? That's today, as you're receiving this message, Shabbat, uh, right now, is the 10th of Nisan. So very appropriate we're talking about this. In the biblical period is the day of choosing the lamb, the day of going to the kosher market, picking the lamb for your family. And it had to be a perfect lamb without blemish because it's going to be a sacrificial lamb. Well, all this ancient tradition of our forefathers, but of course, in Judaism, we don't follow this today. A lot of things we don't do today. Messianic Judaism, we don't do this today. I'm actually kind of glad we don't have to choose a little year-old lamb, uh, bring it into your home. I don't know how those 4-H uh, students, you know, 4-H agriculture kids, and we have the big San Diego County Fair here every year, and the, the kids have raised these lambs and animals uh, from, you know, a baby and then they get to a point, and then you sell it, and you don't want to know what happens after that, right? <laughs> but how gut-wrenching, how heart-wrenching that must be. And, I mean, you see kids crying, you know, old kids crying, uh, because there's an emotional connection there. Well, there's no sacrifice, no temple today, no sacrifices, no functioning priesthood, actually. Uh, no lamb. We Jews don't eat lamb at the Seder, right? Uh, it's... Sounds funny. Maybe you don't know that if you're uh, 
from outside Judaism, but uh, even though the Bible says make sure you eat lamb, <laughs> it's, it's a sacrifice. We can't sacrifice, and it would actually be sacrilegious to eat lamb in this era is how we feel in Judaism, including, uh, I'd say, most Messianic Jews. We don't have lamb on the menu. We've usually got brisket or chicken or something else. But we do have the Zoroah. Remember? Seder plate, different elements, bitter herbs, carpus, the whole thing. Uh, and Zoroah is the shank bone of the lamb, a remembrance of the lamb. So we don't eat lamb. We don't have a lamb sacrifice, obviously, in uh, modern Judaism, the last 2,000 years. But we do remember the lamb with the shank bone, very important, on our Seder plate that we should all reflect on this Passover. The shank bone is a picture of that redemption of the lamb. The lamb that was chosen, the perfect lamb that we chose for our household. The lamb was the way of escape from the plague. Way of escape from the nine other plagues as well, but from the pestilence. Remember, God says, uh, okay, everyone in their house, pestilence is coming, judgment upon Egypt. Really, uh, he doesn't even say upon all Egypt. He doesn't even say that Israel's exempt. But he says there's one way of escape, one way to get out of the pestilence. What is it? Blood of the lamb. Sacrifice of the lamb. The Torah doesn't say, well, if you're Jewish, you're going to be automatically exempt. That would have been nice. <laughs> it doesn't say it. The Torah doesn't even say if you're an Egyptian, you're automatically cursed, under judgment. If you're not Jewish, you're under judgment. It doesn't say that. It says anyone, Israel, Egyptian, Jordanian, whoever you may be, pseudo-Christian, <laughs> there's one way escape from the pestilence. Put the blood of the lamb, remember, sacrifice, and most of you know, put the blood where? On the doorpost. Mezuzah. On the mezuzah is the Hebrew word. The door side of the door jam of your house. But the lamb has to be perfect. The, it's a, that Zoroa bone is actually very spiritual the more you think about it. It reminds us of the way of escape, the way of redemption by that perfect lamb way back in the days of Moses. Lessons for us today. The next few verses talk about the description, inspection of the lamb. Excuse me, inspection of the lamb. Uh, Exodus 6 and 7, verse 6 and 7, we'll read. It says, uh, you must watch over it, the shamer, the mishmeret, until the 14th day of the same month. Choose it at the 10th. Watch it. Shomer, uh, guard it, inspect it until the 14th evening. Then the whole assembly of the congregation of Israel is to slaughter it at twilight, the evening of the 14th. Going into the 15th, they are to take the blood, put it, there you go, on the two mezuzah doorpost, and on the crossbeam of the houses where they will eat it. The inspection of the lamb, okay? Tenth of Nisan, the lamb is chosen. Go to the kosher market in Jerusalem, uh, Tiberias, uh, wherever we may be. Uh, and in biblical days, choose the lamb that is qualified. But choose it on the tenth. Why didn't God just say, hey, choose it on the afternoon of the 14th, slaughter it, get the sacrifice going? Uh, for some reason, it seems to be important. God says, Get it on the 10th, five days before the Seder. Five days before your redemption. And we're told, he tells us why it's important, the Mishmeret, 
from Shomer. Watch it. Guard it. Uh, the idea is inspect it, okay, to see if this lamb, I guess we're supposed to watch it for those five days to make sure it is qualified to be our sacrifice. No defect. As perfect as possible. Uh, kosher le Pesach, for sure. Uh, get that lamb. Watch it for those five days. Not just keep it, but watch it. And then kill it at the twilight of the 14th, going into the 15th for the Seder, as it were. Of course, the first year, it wasn't really much of a Seder. It was like, get the blood on the house, the plague is coming over, the pestilence, and then be ready to move it. Get out of here. So uh, the first Passover, obviously, monumental. Going to the edge of the sea, through the sea, into the wilderness. Uh, amazing, amazing uniqueness to that first Passover. But put the door, blood on the doorpost, the mezuzah, as a, pr a symbol of protection is what it is. I know so, even in Judaism, some people think uh, the mezuzah is some kind of magical charm, right? Uh, mystically will protect you. Uh, well, our sages, our rabbis normally tell us that, no, it's not a, a, a mystical, magical thing. But you know what's in that mezuzah on our doorposts is the scripture, promise of God, Deuteronomy specifically. It's interesting, I, was, I got a call from a, a pastor this week, a, a pastor of a big church here in San Diego, and uh, he was saying, wow, a lot of people are telling me you know, all these remedies to, to come against coronavirus. And, uh, you know, I, all you have to do is drink tea, evidently. Did you know that? Just have a cup of tea and you're cured. I, I think that's amazing. I don't know why we're not doing that. <laughs> I'm drinking it. The, the medical community says uh, there's a lot of bogus stuff out there, right? But I hope we're wise enough to see through that. But this pastor also said, you know, people are asking me, well, what we can do is anoint our, our house with oil. Protect the house. Well, it's kind of like chicken soup. It couldn't hurt, I guess. Uh, you know, the more oil, the better. Go for it. Uh, oil is a symbol of the Holy Spirit. That's fine. But I shared with this pastor, I said, you know what? God gave us a secret weapon 3,500 years ago. It's right out of Egypt. It's called the mezuzah. Put it on your doorposts, not as a magical cure, but within that you shall write it. We prayed it earlier, right? The Shema. Write it on that scripture. Put it on your door. It's the promise of God. And don't forget, it's on our mezuzah to remember Passover. The mezuzah is on your doorpost to remember Passover, we're told. Exodus 12, Exodus 13. This is where the mezuzah came from. So it's really a symbol of God's protection. And we Jews, we love those mezuzahs. We'll put them on every door, uh, you know, basically every door of the house, except the bathroom, by the way. Uh, man, uh, Kehilat Ariel, I know most of you have your mezuzahs up because that is the symbol of God's promise and his protection, even at this time, I believe, of coronavirus. And I told this pastor, I, told, uh, I gave a message at another church via tape. And I said, you know what? As far as I'm concerned, Christians can get a mezuzah. You don't have to be Jewish to have a mezuzah on your door. Uh, I hope you can understand that. Uh, again, it's Rabbi Barney opinion, if you want to call it that. That's not saying you're Jewish all of a sudden or any crazy thing like that. But to have a mezuzah on the door, the promises of God, I mean, it's in the Christian Bible too. <laughs> Write it on your doorpost that we may have the blessing of God. Write it on our doorpost because that's where originally the blood went for our protection and our redemption. So everyone listening to this message, needless to say, uh, after Shabbos, go online, get a mezuzah if you need one. <laughs> uh, it's it's the, the secret weapon that we have, uh, the powerful mezuzah. Check it out.
Well, um, okay, all this ancient tradition of the ancient Passover, the blood of the lamb, interesting, pe that perfect lamb. But here's the deal. Something totally amazing happened. If you fast forward from the days of Moses to 32 AD in Israel, Yerushalayim, the holy city. And uh, I have up on the screen Matthew 21. That's the Gospel of Matthew, chapter 21. So if you're following along, you can turn there. And a uh, famous story that actually most Christians will say, oh, well, that's Palm Sunday. Palm Sunday. We have a holiday called Palm Sunday, they, they say. Uh, it doesn't say it's Palm Sunday. <laughs> we'll see that palms come into the picture, but... I would uh, tell you that it's related to the Torah, the day he came into Jerusalem. Matthew 21, verse 1, says, Now as they drew near to Jerusalem and came to Beit Page, to the Mount of Olives, then Yeshua sent two disciples, saying to them, Go to the village before you. Right away you'll find a donkey tied up and a colt with her. Untie them, donkey and colt. Bring them to me. If anyone says anything to you, you shall say, the rabbi needs them. Right away, he will send them. This happened to fulfill what was spoken through the prophet, saying, quote, Say to the daughter of Zion, see, your king is coming to you, humble, sitting on a donkey, a colt, the foal of a donkey. You get the picture. Now, this is after about three years, a little over three years of Yeshua's ministry, Yeshua of Nazareth in Israel, teaching amazing revelations from the Torah, uh, helping people, healing the sick, confronting people that needed it. And yet towards the end of his ministry, he says, I have to go up to Jerusalem. And, of course, it's leading up to the Last Seder. Hope everyone knows, right? Uh, the Last Supper, it wasn't a communion dinner. <laughs> it, it was a Seder. Come on. Matzah, cups, they're all there. Uh, Heroset, the whole thing. But he knows he needs to be in Jerusalem for Passover for sure. But it's interesting. It's as if he says here, uh, guys, okay, we're, we're on the road coming into the Holy City. Uh, I think he's saying, you know, I didn't have a watch to look at. Hey, guys, guess what? It's time. Mashiach has to come into the city on a particular day. Happened to be the busiest day in Jerusalem, 10th of Nisan. All the markets are open, all the kosher markets. Josephus, the historian, says he saw, he estimates, about 250,000 lambs sold in the Passover when he was in Jerusalem. So imagine that exploding marketplace, everyone picking their lamb, everyone shopping frantically. I mean, it's Costco in its worst day, right? <laughs> and, and yet Yeshua says, hey, guys, 10th of Nisan, it's time. Let's go. Get the donkey. So I was talking to a Jewish friend. He says, oh, well, G Jesus is manipulating that. He's just making it. Well, yes, he is. Of course he's manipulating it because he's the Mashiach. He knows he has to come into the city a certain way. He has to come in on a certain day. And, again, it doesn't say Palm Sunday, all deference to the Christian calendar, but... Uh, the internal evidence, I've read Christian commentaries. They said, well, we know that the next day he goes to Bethany, the next day he goes here and there, and he's ministering on the Temple Mount. It was like five days before the Passover that he comes into Jerusalem. We'll call it Palm Sunday. It probably could have been Palm Monday uh, by Roman calendar. I mean, we, we're not told what Roman day it is, but to get the thing here? This is a prophetic day, the 10th of Nisan. I've got to come to Jerusalem. It's the inspection of the Lamb, the presentation of the Lamb for the whole world. One last look, guys. Five days to check me out. You've heard me for over three years. 
Who wants a kosher lamb for their redemption? Is what Yeshua is saying. On that 10th of Nisan, no doubt about it, uh, chronologically, in my mind. And, of course, uh, their reaction tells you more. Uh, verse 6 of Matthew 21, the disciples went and did as Yeshua had directed them. They brought the donkey, the colt, put the clothing on them. And, you know, it's kind of like a king, not unheard of, a king riding into uh, places on the donkeys. Most of the crowd spread their clothing on the road. Others began cutting branches, hence Palm Sunday uh, tradition. A lot of palm trees in Israel, like here in San Diego. And spreading the branches on the road. This is welcoming the Mashiach. The crowds, the Jewish crowds, going before him and those following kept shouting, Hoshiana, the Ben David. Hosanna, son of David. Baruch Abba, B'Shem Adonai, we welcome you, King Messiah. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hoshiana in the highest. The Jewish crowds. I mean, shopping for their household lamb. Many of them evidently believed. They could see. They were inspecting Yeshua and they were saying, you know, I think he's kosher. <laughs> I think he is our lamb. I think he's the lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world. When he entered Jerusalem, the whole city was stirred up, saying, Who is this? And the crowds kept saying, This is the prophet Yeshua from Nazareth in Galilee. The prophet. If you know your parsha a little bit, the prophet. Deuteronomy 18 is a code name for the Messiah. Not just a prophet, the prophet. That Moshe Rabbeinu himself says, There's coming the prophet after me. Listen to him. He's going to have further revelation. Wow. I, I just have to emphasize, <laughs> some people are kind of confused about this chapter. I've actually heard people say, well, oh, wow, it's so beautiful. The Christians are welcoming Jesus, and oh, all the Jews rejected him. They're, you know, they're going to crucify him in four days or whatever. <laughs> it's like, What? I don't think anyone's that schizophrenic or split personality. Can't we simply understand there were crowds of Jews who welcomed Yeshua as Ben David, the King Messiah. They didn't just change their mind in one day. They had faith, but of course, uh, we understand there were many who did not accept him. The Romans <laughs> for sure did not accept him. They didn't want that, you know, trouble, political trouble in Israel anymore either. But uh, please let it be known, if we're focusing on Shabbat HaGadol, uh, in the first century, oh yeah, plenty of, uh, we admit, plenty of our people did not accept him as the Mashiach. But guess what? There were a lot of us Jews who did embrace him, did accept him. And really, hasn't it always been this way the last 2,000 years? Uh, people, again, naively tend to say, oh, well, the Jews don't. You're, it's almost like defining your Jewishness. Oh, you're Jewish if you don't believe in Jesus. <laughs> it's like, what? What, what about a positive uh, definition? But that's what some Christians believe. You're Jewish if you don't believe in Jesus. Uh, and certainly a lot of our Jewish people, some rabbis even say, uh, you're Jewish if you don't believe in Yeshua. But uh, just for the record, historically, those who actually check it out, it was a split decision. Split decision at best. Many, okay, rejected him. We understand. But how about the Jewish people that said, Baruch haba? Lord, we welcome you. Please come. You are our lamb. We accept you as our lamb. Welcome in the name of Hashem. And Yeshua presenting himself as if to say, take one more look. I'm your Pesach. Who wants to take me in by faith? 
Messianic Judaism says yes to Yeshua. That's it. We, we're the ones that say yes. We're the ones that say right now, Baruch haba b'shem Adonai. Say that with me. Baruch haba b'shem Adonai. Thank you, God. We welcome Yeshua into our Jewish faith, into our, yes, synagogue for Yeshua. And yet this uh, Torah portion also reminds us we should inspect him carefully. As you are listening to this message, it is the 10th of Nisan, Shabbat this year. 10th of Nisan, Shabbat Hagadol. And for many of us, I know, I mean, my Jewish family, my Jewish extended family, I, I'm sure they have not read the New Testament. Uh, actually, we're fortunate if we read the Torah part of the Bible. But take this time to inspect. Take this time to watch and to learn and to consider, is he the kosher lamb of God? A couple more verses in Exodus, which are important. Exodus chapter 12, verse 12 through 14. God says, for I will go through the land of Egypt on that night. I will strike down every firstborn, both man and animals. I will execute judgments against all the gods of Egypt. That's what the plagues were about. I am Adonai. The blood will be a sign for you on the houses, on your mezuzah, where you are. Shelter in place. But make sure you got the right stuff on your doorposts. When I see the blood, I will pass over you. Of course, the name of the holiday. So there will be no plague among you to destroy you when I strike the land of Egypt. The pestilence is coming, in that case, 3,500 years ago. One way of escape, put that blood on your doorpost, and there'll be no plague. Verse 14, this is a day that will be a memorial for you. Remember Pesach. Not just a one-year thing. Do this every year, Israel, Why we do it. You are to keep it as a feast to Adonai throughout your generations. You are to keep it as an everlasting ordinance. Eternal, everlasting. Uh, why does God put such emphasis uh, on the importance of this holiday. It's the oldest holiday of them all, and it makes sense that it deals with redemption, deliverance. So keep it every year to remember. Our spiritual journey has to start with redemption. Fifty days from now, we go with the Holy Spirit. We'll talk more about Shavuot. But the first step of redemption is the Lamb. Covering us. God is covered by the work of Messiah. Remember me and Kehilat Ariel. Uh, please tune in. Everyone listening in, tune in to our virtual Seder next Thursday night, 6.30 p.m. And uh, we will celebrate traditional Seder, Haggadah, music, the whole thing, matzah ball soup, whatever you got going at home there. Uh, but to remember the Lamb. Always remember. So tune in for, uh, I think, a very distinctive Messianic Jewish Seder explanation uh, this upcoming Thursday on our website. So here's the deal. Coronavirus, worries, anxiety. We can all worry if we want. Uh, feel free. And we, some of, you know, we can't help but worry a little bit. Uh, jobs laid off, health issues, whatever it may be, we pray God's protection. But the Shabbat Hagadol, the choosing of the Lamb on this day, is God's secret weapon. Protection. Amazing symbol of what He's done for us. A fulfillment as Yeshua came to Jerusalem on the 10th of Nisan. He's got us covered, don't you think? 
He's got you covered as you keep your faith in Him, as you put your faith in Him. Let us all reflect on that Zoroah lamb. Let us all partake of the lamb. I'm praying that this Pesach, 5780, 2020, year of the pandemic, will have such a fresh awareness in our spirits. We'll be able to say with the other believers, behold the Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world, who protects us under God's covering. Shabbat Shalom, everyone. May we keep our faith strong in Him. Let me say a prayer with you all, and I'll have the, the worship team come back up. Father God, God of Israel, we do thank you today. This Shabbat HaGadol, the great Sabbath before our redemption. Thank you for all the prayers and the meditations, the scripture readings that remind us of the importance of this Shabbat. How amazing, Lord, uh, historically choosing the lamb for Passover on the 10th of Nisan. Lord, may we all take a fresh look at Yeshua of Nazareth. Most of us tuned in here are already believers. We received him. We understand he is the Lamb of God who takes away our sin. His blood, as it were, his death, symbolic atonement upon our lives, the doorpost of our lives. Thank you. I pray for an extra blessing and shalom for all of us believers who keep our faith in him. And Lord, I pray for the person, maybe many people who are tuned in to our service, and this is some new thought. There is a Jewish way to follow Yeshua. Lord, touch that person by your spirit. If anyone needs you, it's just simple faith. It's, it's saying, I, I think I believe. I do receive Yeshua. I'm not going to go through Passover without the right sacrifice. I believe today, Lord God of Israel, he is your Messiah, your son that you sent for this purpose. I receive him as the lamb, my lamb, and thank you for redemption. Thank you for protection. Thank you, Lord, for all these things. We give you praise. In this time of challenge, time of anxiety, you keep him in perfect faith, in perfect peace, whose mind is secure on you. Thank you, Abba. You go with us. We will be more than conquerors through him who loves us. I pray this in Yeshua's name. Everyone says, worldwide, amen. Amen. Baruch Hashem. All right. Well, let's uh, wrap up our service and uh, a few prayers and a song. So if you have your prayer book. And uh, the Elenu is a beautiful traditional prayer of our tradition and uh, excellent prayer for uh, this current situation, Elenu. And um, page 106 in the Siddur, and we will open the doors of the ark, and uh, you can pray with us whatever prayer book you're using. But this prayer, we bend the knee to symbolize our faith in God. Aleinu l'shabeach l'adon ha'kol l'atet gedulat le'otzer breshit shelo asanu kegoye ha'aratzot velo samanu kemishpechot ha'adama 
Shelo sam chelchenu kahim, begoralenu kichochamona, dirnachnu kohenu modin, lifne melech malche hamlachim, hakadosh baruchu. And on the English 107. It is our duty to give praise to the Lord of all, to ascribe greatness to him who is the creator from the beginning. For he has not made us like the nations of the other lands, and he has not placed us like the families of the earth. He did not make our portion to be like theirs, nor our lot like that of all their multitudes. We therefore bend the knee to acknowledge the supreme king of kings, the holy one, blessed be he, that stretches forth the heavens and lays the foundations of the earth. And the seed of his glory is in the high heavens. The presence of his majesty is in the lofty heights. He is our God. There is no other. He is our king. Truly, there is none beside him. Just as it is written in his Torah, you shall know this day and keep it in your heart that the Lord, he is God in the heaven above and on the earth beneath. There is none else. V'ne'emar v'haya Adonai Lechal kol ha'aretz Bayom ha'hu Bayom ha'hu Yeye Adonai echad Ushemo 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 And it is said, and the Lord shall be king over all the earth. On that day, the Lord will be one and his name one. Amen. The Lamb of God, his name one. We may close the ark. And an important closing liturgical prayer, the mourner's cottage. And uh, page 108 in your siddur. And... Uh, Again, sorry we can't be together, but uh, mourners can rise at their home, wherever you are. Uh, if you've lost a loved one, close loved one, over the last year, uh, or if uh, it's the yard site the remembrance, the anniversary remembrance of that loss, uh, you may stand. And the rest of us can uh, say this prayer and even pray for true shalom for those who are also grieving. We think of thousands tens of thousands worldwide who have lost their lives recently and families that are grieving. So a special prayer for them through the Kaddish. Page 108. Yitkadal v'yitkadash me rabba v'yalamad ivra chirute v'yamlech malchute v'chayechon uv'yomechon uv'chaye de kol beit Yisrael v'agalav izman koriv v'yimru. Amen. Yehesh me rabba mevorach le'olam u'leme elamaya yitbarach Yishabach, the Yit Parar, the Yit Roman, the Yit Nase, the Yit Hadar, the Yit Ale, the Yit Halal, Shemay the Kudisha, Brechu, Lelom in Kobrichata, Vishirata, Tushbechata, Benechemata, Damiram, the Alma, Imru, Amen. Yeheshlam, our Rabba, Min Shemaya, the Chaim, Aleno, the Alko, Yisrael, Bimru, Amen. O Se Shalom, Bimroma, Uya, Se Shalom, Aleno. Bimru. Amen. Lord, please give your abundant peace from heaven. Give your comfort to those who are grieving in Zion, those who are grieving at this worldwide time of challenge. In our righteous Messiah. Amen. Amen. A final song uh, for our Shachrit service. And uh, uh, really a song of hope. Lashana Haba'a Birushalayim, of course, closes the Passover Seder coming up Thursday, Wednesday and Thursday, and uh, next year, Jerusalem. So uh, may it be a prayer of the Messiah returning. May it be a prayer of comfort, knowing that God's got everything under control.
Amen. Maybe this year, Yerushalayim, Mashiach returning. We look forward to his blessing on this upcoming Pesach. All right. Well, we will uh, close with the uh, Kiddush, a blessing over the cup and the bread. And maybe Elisheva can stand over there, please. And um, again, always, uh, even times of challenge, times of pandemic, believe it or not, every Shabbat, we bless God because he's bigger than anything this world can throw at us. So we uh, bless first with the cup. You can hold that up. Baruch Adonai Eloheinu Melech HaOlam Borei Amen. Blessed art thou, O Lord our God, King of the universe, creator of the fruit of the vine. Amen. Social distance. There you go. Okay. And we'll say the blessing over the bread. Baruch Adonai Eloheinu Melech HaOlam Ha'otzi Lechev Mim Ha'aretz Amen. Blessed art thou, King of the universe, who has brought forth bread from the earth, brought Mashiach, the Lamb, to us at this season, and bringing him back to the earth. Amen. Baruch haba. We welcome you, Lord. Bim, bam, bim, 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 bam. Bim, 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 bam. Bim, bam, bim, 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 bam. Bim. Let's hear it, everyone out there. Kids. Shabbat shalom. Shabbat shalom. Shabbat 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 shalom. Shabbat shalom. Shabbat shalom. Shabbat 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 shalom. Shabbat shabbat. Shabbat shabbat shalom. Shabbat shabbat. Shabbat shabbat shalom. Shabbat shalom. Shabbat shalom. Shabbat 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 shalom. Peaceful Sabbath to everyone. Hey, so here's the deal. Stay tuned. Uh, long distance, uh, kehilatariel.org. So from San Diego, Kehilat Ariel, Messianic Synagogue. Wish you all a good uh, preparation time for Pesach. Um, we have classes happening this week, home groups happening. Check our website. And God bless you all for continuing to support the vision of this temple. Again, you can donate online. You can mail to our address on our website that uh, we go forward, Kadima, forward with Yeshua. God bless. We miss you guys. But glad we could connect today. Shabbat Shalom.
Te leamo, te leamo, te leamo. 